Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in his own 5B in mid-Michigan. It's a cool morning and hopefully the sun will be coming up here to warm us up a little bit soon. We got a couple of great projects to you, well four actually. We're gonna start by pulling up the dahlias. I got a lot of questions this year about what I do with my dahlias and I do store them over the winter. So I'm gonna pull those out of the ground today and show you how I do that. We're also going to plant a pink diamond hydrangea tree which will be absolutely beautiful and then we will take some of the ground up leaves that we grind up and we will do some mulching and I will show you how to use leaf mulch and some of the pros uh, of using it. Also I have forgotten at this point <laughs> what my number four was so hopefully I'll remember it before the end of this video. All right let's get going. All right, so some of the supplies that I have today include some awesome gardening gloves. These actually are called Hydra Hide Gloves. You can see the name here. And I love these because they have coverage all the way up over your knuckles in terms of waterproofing. And then on the inside, they have some really nice uh, fuzzy liners, which help to keep your hands warm on cool days in the garden. Then we also have a trowel and I've got my crate here where I'm going to be storing the dahlias. So I'm going to put on my gloves and we're going to try to pull these dahlias just by hand. But if I can't get them out, I will use my trowel. And it has been fairly wet recently, so I think they're going to pull pretty easy. I've had this stake in around these, so I'm going to pull that out first. I wish I had staked them earlier in the season than I actually did. And I don't want to pull up this Veronica that's next to it. Let's see if we can keep that down in there. Okay, so this tuber came up very successfully and actually I forgot to get I do need one other thing. I need some seconders. I don't know about you guys, but I am not necessarily a big planner when it comes to gardening. I usually just start a job and as I need something, I go and get it. So one of the hardest things to adapting to making these YouTube videos has been trying to think about the things that I need in order to prepare for each video ahead of time. and. It doesn't always work out. And right now I'm still having a little bit of that COVID brain fog. So in addition to cutting those off, I'm also just going to trim off these roots on the end. And I've already pulled out the dahlias that were not necessarily the ones that were my favorites, so I don't have to pull those today. If you see any that look like they're rotted, any of the tubers, if they don't look good, at the time that you pull them up right now is a good time to get them off. Um, they will look mushy and brown if they are, but I don't see any of those on mine so this looks really really good for storage all right let's get the rest of them out Oop, the top of that one just snapped right off And you'll have a little hole where they were. Just smooth it over and cover it up. I'm also gonna pull this. There we go. Then we have a couple over here. Oh, 
And the tops just snapped right off of that one too. You can see that's actually uh, two separate tubers now. It's really important to pull these once it starts getting cold like this because um, the concern is that if you're getting fall rain and cold weather that you could end up with all the tubers rotting. So next we have our pots over here, which still have some blooms on them. Isn't that amazing? Despite having freezes, they're just still looking really pretty. They're a whole different color right now because it's so much cooler. They're not as dark. Now this one right here is not my favorite. So it actually looks better right now because it's pretty before it's kind of like this weird gross orange color, at least in my mind. So I'm going to try to get that one separated so I don't save that one. This is actually a whole lot more work than just pulling them out of the ground, pulling them out of the pots. I thought this would be easier than the ones in the ground. But these really have rooted in. So it'll be a little bit more of a chore because we'll need to get that root ball uncovered. And then we have the American, I think this is called American Dream. So we're going to pull that one out as well. Hey guys, I want to show you this praying mantis that is on our ceiling here. He's probably really cold and waiting to heat up in the sun before he can move again. So cool. Okay guys, we got lots of dahlias here. So I think what I'm going to do is start with some of the ones that I want to keep first. This one's going to be a get rid of, but I do want to get some of the soil off and put it back in the pot because that's a lot of soil on there. So I'm actually just going to take my shovel and this is the, the Root Slayer Perennial Shovel. I always get questions about it whenever I use it. What is that shovel? And it is an amazing shovel. And everyone I know who has ever gotten one after I recommended it to them has really loved it. And there is a link to it in the description of this video. It's in every video because I love it so much. And it is not a sponsored item at all. So you don't need any of the little teeny tiny roots to store so you can really be quite aggressive in terms of getting the soil off because if those little roots break it's not a big deal for over the winter those will just dry up anyway some of these are really big clumps now and will probably be able to be divided but i think i will wait until the spring to do that if i decide to do it Okay, so that's what this one looks like after I have cleaned it up, which I think it looks pretty good. Um, but I'm going to have to definitely let it sit for a bit and dry out so that all these nooks and crannies, I can still get more soil out from between the tubers because we definitely don't want to leave that on all winter. It'll increase the chances that I get rot. So that one looks pretty good. All right, this is the one I'm not keeping, so we'll just try to get a whole bunch of soil off of it. And then the rest will go into the cart to take to the compost bin. Now, 
know, I didn't order one that I don't like. <laughs> this was just one that came in a packet. All of my dahlias were supposed to be pink and like blue. Um, and they did not come to me that way. So some of them I like and some of them I didn't. I got orange ones, I got yellow ones, and I got pink ones. And some that are kind of purple. So I'm just not going to keep all of them. Alright, that looks good. And we'll toss out this begonia. This elephant ear looks fine. I'm going to break the top off of this. Nope, can't. Gonna have to cut it off. So this elephant ear corm, I can save this. And uh, so I just cut off the top. And these require a little bit more drying out because the stems are still quite green. And then I'll just take the roots off. You can see I'm just going to tear the roots off. And we'll put that in the bin as well. This time of year, the compost pile gets really full. Now this is the same way that you would store any cannas that you have. I'm not going to show that today because we won't really have time for it. But it's a very similar process in terms of pulling them out, making sure that they're dry and clean, and then uh, storing them over the winter. I think this is going to be easier just to dump out. We'll see. So this is one dahlia. Okay, this one's clean. We'll put this one in.
an elephant ear. This one actually looks like it might be an easy one to separate at some point in the future, like by wiggling them apart. Um, I'm not going to do it right now because they're probably a little bit brittle, but that's definitely something I will try in the spring. And we'll just take all these roots and throw them in the compost too. So this is what I have so far and we're just going to keep these in the spin for a few days while it dries out and then I will get the rest of it off and then I will put, um, I, I like to get like a, uh, what do you call it, a hamster mix to put over the top of these just to kind of keep a little bit of moisture in but not so much that you end up with rot or mildew or something like that or mold. So um, that typically works well for me, at least last year it did. So I shouldn't say typically because I've only done this one year before, but it worked out really well. So I'm going to do what I did last year and hopefully to be successful again this year. And I'll just put it in my basement in a room that is dark and cool. All right, on to the next job. On days like today, sometimes it's hard to get out into the garden because it's cool out or maybe it's cloudy out. Um, but if you dress right, it definitely helps. And then once you get going, your blood gets circulating and you start to warm up and it feels good and you're ready to do some more. So we're on to our second task today and we are going to plant this diamond, diamond pink. I don't have the tag with me. I believe it's a diamond pink hydrangea and this has been trained into a standard already so I'm really excited about putting this in the bed. I'm going to put it right about here so that it's in the middle and I get some nice height in this area amongst the ferns and I think it's going to provide a beautiful another color to this area. All right let's get going. This is going to be a bit of a challenge because I have some really lovely ferns that are in here and I love them all. They will definitely all grow back, they'll spread again and fill in, but um, it's always hard to dig up plants or kind of watch them get bent or trampled or something like that while you're in this process, but I just want to reassure you that they will come back. So it will all be worth it in the end. Okay. So I'm going to try to plant it so that we're right about in the middle of this fence here. Again, just adding some beautiful height here and the pink color will, of the blooms and the white color of the blooms will contrast well with this. And this is a part shade area and the thing about this hydrangea is that it is good in zones 3 to 8 and it is good in part shade. So I'm very excited about that. All right, here we go. Ferns are also really hard to be able to tell 
where they start and stop. So the sad thing about this is that it's going to look probably a little bit worse when I get this in at first than it did before I planted it, but next year it's going to be all worth it. Sure, it's hard to see in here. So this root slayer has some serrated edges on it, so right now I'm just using it to help saw through some of those roots. So the soil here is fairly penetrable, but it's those roots that you have to get on the fern. I just need to make sure this hole is wide enough and deep enough and it's a little tricky because there are some tree roots that run through here and this bed actually slopes towards the fence and then there's a really steep hill on the other side of the fence all right the soil does look pretty good but I am going to go grab some fertilizer because I really love this hydrangea and they do like a little bit more fertilizer than some of the other plants. So we'll grab some of that and throw it in the bottom of the hole. All right, so we're just gonna put some of this holly tone in there. This is my ice cream bucket full of uh, holly tone and hydrangeas like the holly tone because they do like a little acidity and this it has some of that natural stuff that like Biotone has in it. This is a uh, part of the Tone series from Espoma and it's also organic. Now you don't wanna fertilize things with like a liquid feed this time of year, but an organic feed is just fine because it's really slow releasing. It requires the uh, soil organisms to actually absorb it, uh, process it before it can even go into the roots. This is a challenge with my bad knee going on right now. Trying to get in and out of here and lift this heavy hydrangea. Trying to figure out which way is front on this and I think it's the other way. All right, I need to move this like, I need a little bit more like an inch this direction or else it's gonna bother me for the rest of its life. That's about right, right there.
Okay, I think I got the fern in as best that I could. There's probably gonna be some air pockets down in there, but I'm gonna grab the hose and we'll get this watered in. Oh my goodness, you guys, I am so excited about the way this looks and the addition to this area. It's great. The added height is something that I think this area just really needed for that additional interest. All right, let's go get some leaf mulch. I think we'll start over here and put some around this freshly planted tree and fern. So this is just a gorilla cart full of leaf mulch. And what it is is maple leaves that have fallen in our front yard. And then my husband has used our leaf chopper that is basically a vacuum and a chopper to suck them up and make them into much smaller pieces so that they'll break down a little bit easier and not form a uh, very dense mat. But this will help provide some additional protection from the elements as this hydrangea and the ferns get established. So let's get them on. Try to throw it way in the back. Isn't it hard after your gardens get established sometimes to get in there and do things without harming the plants? Definitely makes a bit of a mess given how I had to plant these and trying to get it in around the ferns, but that's really going to help. Okay, we're going to put some leaf mulch on this garden bed because after I planted the little hottie hydrangea, we definitely kind of lost the layer of mulch on top. So we're going to put some just right in here. This mulch can really help those kind of perennials that like that uh, forest floor and that naturally thrive in a woodland environment. So it's a great way to make it just like it's in nature. Try to create space around perennials just a little bit. Creating that space will ensure that they still get the light and air that they need to thrive. Another great benefit to mulching this time of year and in spring is that it helps regulate the soil temperature. So if you have super intense cold nights during this time of year, it will help keep that soil warm during the day. And when it warms up quickly in the spring too fast, but then drops again, it will help keep that soil from fluctuating up and down too much. That helps save your plants. I also happen to think that it looks really pretty until the leaves fade to brown. It just really jazzes up the garden and puts a little extra fall color in there. 
Pukeras also can love this mulch because they can be prone to frost heave and because this helps regulate the temperature, it helps keep them in the ground from being heaved out when it frosts. Well, there you have it guys. Three fall tasks that we managed to accomplish today. And unfortunately, I still don't remember what the fourth one was that I was going to do. So it must not have been that important or meant for today. There's always tomorrow, right? All right, well, thanks so much for joining me. I do appreciate you joining me in the garden regularly. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate all of your comments. And I look forward to hearing a little bit about what you're doing in this fall weather to prepare your garden for the winter. See you next time. Bye.